Welcome to The Hateful Eight, which is three hours long. I don't know why I keep picking these fucking long ass movies to make videos about. I'm just making it harder for myself, but anywho. This movie takes place a little after the American Civil War, and all the characters in this movie are on their way to a place called Red Rock. However, there's a big ass blizzard going on, and they're forced to take shelter in Minnie's haberdashery. And for anybody who's not aware of what a haberdashery is, like me when I first watched this movie, it's basically a place where you can buy sewing equipment and other stuff and shit that you forgot to pack in your travels in the old times, and I guess also serves as a rest stop for these old times. So you can hang there when you're tired on long trips, I guess. Now, there are a bunch of characters in this movie, but as the name would suggest, eight main hateful ones. We got General Smithers, an old fuck that fought on the black people hating side of the war. And he fought in the Battle of Something Something Rouge. Uh, I don't fucking remember its name, but it's called Something Something and then the Rouge, in which he killed a bunch of black POWs. And he's on his way to Red Rock to bury his son, who he believes died there because his son went over there for business uh, a few years ago and never came back, which means he died there. We got Major Marquis Warren, played by Samuel Jackson. He too was fighting in that war, however he was on the other side, obviously, and he was really good at killing white folks, so good that they put a bounty on his head during the war, and it was really big but it kept getting smaller and smaller because everyone who came after him would die because he was so good at killing people, and eventually after the war ended it went down to zero. And Marquise fought in the battle of Something Something Rouge too, and he is on his way to Red Rock because he wants to claim some bounties that he got. John the Hangman Ruth. He is also a bounty hunter but he is a special kind of bounty hunter, he likes to bring in his bounties alive so he can watch them hang, hence the name John the Hangman Ruth. However, everyone in this movie, including everyone watching this movie thinks this is a dumb idea and he should just kill him and bring him in and take the bounty. And he's on his way to Red Rock in a private horse-drawn carriage to bring in Daisy Damergu, who has handcuffed him in that carriage. Daisy Damergu is a part of a really big bad gang and she has a huge ass bounty on her head. And we also got Chris Mannix. Now Chris Mannix and his father, but mainly his father, had a rebel gang that was part of the confederate side called the Mannix Gang Rebel group, whatever, fuck, I don't care. And they basically had really shitty war practices. And he's on his way to Red Rock because he's supposed to be the new sheriff of Red Rock. Oswaldo, some British fella who's a hangman and he's going to Red Rock to do the hangings of Red Rock. Joe Gage, some fucker that sounds like he gargles marbles and he's on his way to somewhere outside Red Rock to spend Christmas with his mother. And then we got Bob, some Mexican dude taking care of Minnie's haberdashery for Minnie while she's gone. Now it's worth mentioning that everyone in this movie recognizes each other somehow. I don't know how this is, America's a big place, but I guess in these times Times, there were less people there so it kind of makes sense but fuck it who cares whatever moving on now let's get into the actual movie and after some long ass shots of the frozen wilderness and Jesus we got Major Marquis Warren sitting down the middle of the road on his bounties that he was collecting and a horse drawn carriage comes along and he asks if he could ride along with them because his horse got fucked because it was old and after some friendly threatening a gunpoint by the passenger who is John Ruth handcuffed to Daisy Dahmer group he's like come on in and then after some more long ass shots of the frozen forest horses and Daisy licking her own blood after she got elbowed in the snows by John Ruth because she called him stupid. And this is a huge factor of why this movie is so long. Long ass shots like this. I understand it was shot in glorious 70mm Quentin and you want to flex your pan vision on us all and cut it where credits do, these shots look dope. But it's too fucking long. Anyway, after some more wasted time, John Ruth asks to see the Lincoln letter, which is a letter that was written from Abraham Lincoln to Major Marquise during the war, which Marquise always keeps on. And he reads it and he's like, see this shit bitch? He and the president were pan pals. That's so fucking cool. What the fuck? So after Marquise eats her out of the fucking carriage, John also gets seated out the carriage. Marquise stops the carriage, he goes out and he gets the Lincoln letter and then he goes back and he sees a dude running in the snow and he's like, hey John, someone else is in the snow. And John uncuffs himself from this bitch and he goes over to check it out. The hell dude, she could run away. I mean, there's no one for her to go, granted, but you really want to risk her giving it a shot and then you'd have to waste time and effort running after her and handcuffing her back to yourself again. So the dude in the snow turns out to be Chris Mannix. His horse got fucked too and a reluctant John lets him in the car, or the carriage, but he makes a deal with Marquise to protect his bounty while he protects his bounty so you know they protect each other's bounties because he doesn't trust Chris and his whole I'm gonna be the new sheriff of Red Rock story so Marquise agrees and they ride off and after some more wasted time some casual racism by Chris and a little history lesson about Marquise they arrive at Minnie's Habitation oh and the whole movie is divided into these chapters which is cool I guess so they arrive there and they're greeted by Bob and John's like hey where the fuck is Minnie and Sweet Dave Sweet Dave I think runs the place with Minnie they're not here I'm running the place where they're gone okay cool nice hat thanks so John goes in the Habitation and Bob and Marquise put in the horses inside the stable and put the riding shit with them and lay out some food I guess. While OB the driver and Chris lay out a line from the Hebedeshery to the shit house and from the stable to the Hebedeshery. Because even though there's a blizzard, they still have to take shits and feed the horses. And they do this in another unnecessarily long shot. Not only that, but these idiots keep walking to and from the metal stakes they're gonna plant into the ground instead of just carrying them with them. Those fucking idiots. Wasting time, shit. Anyway, in the stable, Marquise is immediately suspicious of Senor Bob. After that, they're all finally inside the Hebedeshery and they're 
there were a bunch of people already there inside the haberdashery. I really like that word. You're gonna hear me say it a lot. Fucking deal with it. These people are the super racist old fuck and the dude that sounds like his vocal cords are made out of sandpaper and the extremely British Oswaldo Mowbray. At this point, in the interest of time, I think it's very important that I show you something I like to call the hate chart, which shows who hates who and why. Alright, real fast. Marquise hates Daisy because she's racist and she spit on his letter. Chris hates Joe for being ugly. John hates Chris for shitty war practices. Chris hates Marquise because he's black and Marquise hates Chris because he's racist. Joe hates John for taking his guns by force. Well, he didn't take him yet, but he's gonna. The old fuck also hates Marquise because he's black and Marquise obviously hates him because he's super fucking racist and because he also killed a bunch of black POWs during the fucking battle of some some rouge. John hates Daisy for being a bitch and Daisy hates John because he captured her and he's dragging her halfway across the country fucking hang, so duh. Marquise hates Bob because he thinks he's lying and Bob hates Marquise because he doesn't trust him. And as well though, he's... He's just chilling, you know, he's, he's cool. So they're in there and paranoid John thinks that one of the people that was already in there is working with Daisy and wants to get her free by killing him. So with the help of Marquise, he takes Joe Gage's guns by force and Oswaldo just hands his over. Then he tells OB to throw the guns down the toilet in the shithouse. However, John doesn't intend on killing anyone, he's just doing this as a precaution since they're all gonna be stuck here for a few days till the blizzard finishes or blizzes or fucking it, it blizzard goes by way. Then they all sit down to have some stew, and John uncuffs Daisy so they can both eat like normal human beings. Then Obi comes back freezing his ass off, and John finds out that Marquise's Lincoln letter is actually fake. Marquise made it up to disarm white people, cause white people feel better when they know that the black person corresponded with the president. So after that, Marquise takes a bowl of stool and gives it to General Oldfuck, and they sit down to have a small little chat about life post-war, while Bob starts playing the piano. And the old fuck tells him that he's here to bury his son and whatnot, and he's like, hmm, that's interesting, I know your son. Then he puts down a gun next to the old fuck, and the old fuck's like, you knew my son? You see, this fucker's son went out there to find his fortune, so to speak, and that fortune came in the form of a bounty that was on Marquise's head. It was still at $5,000 at the time. But when he got there, he, you know, obviously he couldn't do it because Marquise is so good and he got the drop on him first, and he started begging for his life and telling him his whole life story, which is a big mistake, because when he found out that he had this fucker's son with him, he was never gonna let him live. So he made him strip down naked and walk for two miles or so in the snow, and then literally made him suck his dick. So after he tells that to the old fuck, the old fuck reaches for the gun, but because Marquise is fast as fuck and this guy's old as shit, he kills him first. And the way he killed him was fair game, because the old fuck reached for the gun first. At this point, Bob has stopped playing the piano when he closed it and... I did not alter the length of this black screen at all. This is generally how long it is in the actual movie. The fuck are you filming Panvision here, Quentin? It's just a black screen. Anyway, some narration starts, which feels hella out of place since this entire movie had no narration until now. Obi and Joe Gage throw Smithers' body out, and Chris, who was very fond of Smithers because he was a fucking confederate general, whatever, claims Smithers' coat. Joe and Obi come back, and then John and Obi have some coffee, while Daisy sings a song about John's death. Then he takes the guitar that she was playing on and smashes it against a pillar, then handcuffs himself to her again. And this is where the movie really spices up. You see, the narrator mentioned a bunch of useless shit, but he did mention one very important thing, which is that while everyone was distracted by Marquise killing Smithers, someone poisoned the coffee. And now John and Obi are puking blood, and then John tries to fight Daisy and pukes blood in her face, then she takes his gun and shoots him in the stomach and kills him, and then Marquise steps in and takes the gun away from her and lines everybody left alive up against the wall to find out who the fuck poisoned the coffee. Then he brings Chris over next to him because he doesn't think that he poisoned the coffee since he's about to drink from it, until John and Obi started puking blood and John warned him with his last dying breath that the coffee was poisoned. Wait, why doesn't this bullet penetrate John's body and injure Daisy? Like the rest of the bullets that penetrated all the other bodies? Now Marquis starts to interrogate the three peeps on the wall, but especially Bob. He mentions how the stew that they ate tasted an awful lot like Minnie's stew. Then he uncovers Sweet Dave's chair from the shit that's on top of it and he finds a blood stain. And he also mentions how Minnie would never leave her haberdashery, the most precious thing to her in this entire world, in the hands of a Mexican since she hated Mexicans. And he concludes that he killed Minnie and Sweet Dave and he shoots a shot in his stomach, but the blood spider comes out of his chest. Then he shoots another shot into his chest, but the blood spider comes out of his stomach. Bob drops to the ground and he shoots two shots on his head and blows his brains out. Then he threatens to pour all the coffee down Daisy's throat if none of them come forward with who pours in the fucking coffee. Then Joe Gage speaks up, but after that, some dude in the basement shoots Marquise in the nuts. Then Oswaldo pulls out a hidden pistol and shoots Chris, but Chris lands a better shot on him, but doesn't shoot Joe Gage because he's unarmed. And all this from the nut shot to the next chapter screen was shot in slow motion, which is cool until you realize that most of it was just Samuel Jackson screaming. Next up, we cut to earlier that day when Bob, Oswaldo, Joe Gage, and Shannon Tatum arrive. Then, they killed Minnie Sweet 
freed Dave and all Minnie's workers and their stagecoach drivers but left the old guy because he added a nice touch and they just told him to keep his mouth shut. Then Channing Tatum hid in the basement waiting for the opportune moment to strike. So as it turns out they're all part of a gang, a big bad gang, okay? They all have huge bounties on their head which begs the question how the fuck did neither John nor Marquise who are very good bounty hunters recognize any of them. I just want to go back a little bit because I have a few questions. Number one, why did they wait so long to kill John Ruth? Wouldn't it have been smarter to kill him when he was closing the fucking broken door in the beginning of the movie and the only people inside the haberdashery at the time with people that were in on the plan that seems like a pretty fucking opportune moment for me number two how the fuck does oswaldo shoot the vase of jelly beans from this angle and her chest at the same time how the fuck does bull physics in this movie work number three how can ultra racist super fucking cunt bag old guy stand to say in this haberdashery since it's owned by a black person and have black people working for them and number four how the hell did minnie not notice that bob was mexican she literally had a sign hung up that said no fucking mexicans allowed without the fucking but you get my point how did she not notice whatever let's cut back to the present time they tell Channing to doom to come out with his hands up then he comes up and looks at his sister then they blow his head off and splatter his brains all over his sister's face and another example of fucked up bullet physics in this movie this bullet was powerful enough to blow his head clean off and he was positioned in such a way that his blood would perfectly splatter all over his sister's face like this however the bullet did not travel through his head and kill her too it just hit an invisible wall moving on daisy now mad as fuck and now the leader of the gang since her brother was the leader and she was second in command so now she is in command because he is fucked tells chris that he has done nothing that she cannot forgive yet and if he kills marquise she's gonna give him all the bounties of all the dead gang members and the 15 gang members that she has waiting for her in red rock won't kill him once he gets there then marquise shoots her in the foot to shut her the fuck up then he shoots the englishman at this moment joe gage reaches for a hidden gun under the table and attempts to kill marquise but this dipshit instead of just stealthily trying to kill marquise kicks up the chair behind and makes it so fucking obvious that he's trying to shoot marquise who right now is hyper alert adrenaline filled and already has a gun pointed in his general direction what a fucking idiot so after marquise shoots and kills joe gage he runs out of bullets to kill daisy then chris trolls marquise and daisy into thinking he's gonna make a deal with her and he's like soik i don't believe you got 15 people waiting in red rock bitch then he passes out and daisy cuts john's arm off and tries to go for a gun but then he wakes back up and shoots her in the stomach then marquise and chris decide to hang the bitch like john first intended and then after they watch her die chris reads the fake lincoln letter and i guess they both butt out and died this movie gets a wild out of a west